Welcome back to the show. Today I want to share some thoughts with you on survival lessons. No, I'm not a wilderness expert at all. But going through life, I think from time to time, you and I need to be reminded of maybe some ideas, some concepts, some encouragement maybe from people who have gone through some difficult times, some challenges in their lives, that maybe, maybe there's an idea or a lesson or a story that can help you and I as we go through our struggles in our own lives. Bear Grylls, if you've ever watched survival shows on TV, he is a British military guy that has um, done some really cool stuff, if you're a guy and you're into that kind of stuff. And I researched some of his quotes that he has written in, in a couple of his books that I want to begin the show by sharing some of his wisdom before I kind of get into some of the meat that I've put together for the show here to today. So Bear Grylls said, he said one time, you can't become a decent horseman until you fall off and get up again a good number of times. There's life in a nutshell. I'll repeat it. You can't become a decent horseman until you fall off and get up again a good number of times. That's life in a nutshell. I think you and I tend to forget sometimes that the most successful people keep trying over and over and over again. He goes on to say in another book, he said, the difference between ordinary and extra, extraordinary is so often just simply that little word extra. And for me, I've always grown up with the belief that if someone succeeds at is, it's because they're brilliant or talented or just better than me. It, it means more than these words. And he always felt smaller because of that. But the truth is very different. As for me, to learn really that ordinary really can achieve something extraordinary by just going a little bit more. Think about that in your own life. How many people have you met, maybe worked with, maybe family members, maybe people that you have seen on TV that have become above average? I'm not even going to say extraordinary just yet. They've become above average. And you looked at them, it's like, how in the world could you have become above average when I know where you come from? I know who you are. I know you can't spell. I know you can't do this. I can't know you can't do that. And they've excelled and achieved an above average level of everything. Well, if you look at it closely enough, you're going to see that the majority of these people have only succeeded because they've kept pushing more consistently than everybody else in their lives. Bear Grylls goes on to say, he said, the lesson is the rewards in life don't always go to the biggest or the bravest or the smartest. The rewards go to the dogged, he says. And when you're going through hell to the person who just keeps going, just keeps going, just keeps going, getting back up again. If you look at all this, not all, a good chunk of the sports players that have achieved an above average level of success, where are they before everybody else? They're practicing their craft. They're practicing their sport way, way more than the average player. So that suggests to me, again, that maybe the people who survive some of their most difficult times in their lives are the ones who persist more than everybody else. I used to work with a company who had an employee in it who could not read or write. But week after week, he was the most productive employee in the region. Why, you ask? Well, how? What? He can't even read or write. Well, this person outworked everybody else and built into his daily agenda tools and tricks to help him overcome his difficulty of not being able to read and write. However, in the same region, there were college-educated people that weren't producing 10% of what this guy was. Why? Work ethic, desire, hunger, tenacity, a survival mode was not even part of their thinking at all. Bear Grylls says, why is it that the finish line always tends to appear just after the point at which we most want to give up? 
He says, it is the universe's way of reserving the best for those who can give the most. What I do know from nature is that the dawn only appears after the darkest hour. I cannot overemphasize enough to you on these programs that we do is that tenacity over a period of time, let me say this slightly in a unique way, consistent tenacity, consistent tenacity will push you to a level that is far beyond the average person, because I'll tell you why. The average person just starts and stops. If you look back at their life, their life is full of starts and stops. They never really finish anything. They start a bunch of stuff. In fact, Jim Rohn said something to the effect years ago. He said, most people, you look at them, they have a life full of foundations. That is like you would build a foundation on a house, right? You pour the concrete and put the walls. They have all these foundations, but none of them have built a house. It's a it's hundred foundations over a, a lifespan but nothing's been built because they haven't completed anything that they've started. I wonder if you've struggled that maybe from time to time with building a lot of foundations, i.e. getting a lot of ideas, a lot of concepts, a lot of desires to do certain things, but you never followed through. You never continued down that path of survival because this came up or that valley was there and you couldn't imagine climbing that mountain because it's just so incredibly high. But the people with tenacity, with consistent tenacity, are the ones that consistently achieve the extraordinary results. Bear Grill said, are you the sort of person who can turn around when you have nothing left and find that little bit of extra inside to keep you going? Or do you sag and wilt with exhaustion? It is a mental game. It is, it is hard to tell how people will react until they are squeezed. Have you ever been squeezed, in quotes, emotionally squeezed? And then what came out of your mouth? You were shocked to realize what came out of your mouth. Because when you got squeezed, really, the real you came out, didn't it? Because up until then, you have this image, you have this image that you want people to see. But when you're really squeezed, when life really puts you in a bind, when, when really, you know, kind of life tries to screw you over, the real you comes out. That's when survival really kicks in. I, I'm, uh, occasionally I watch this TV show, if you're watching around 2018, 19. Uh, there's a show that was on TV a lot called Naked and Afraid. It's a show about two strangers. They go out to the wilderness and a variety of places around the world, and they live for X amount of days or weeks with no clothes on, and they have to literally find their own food, build their own shelter, and everything else. But as I watch the show several times, you see that the longer they go without food, the longer they are out there on their own without having things that keep them going, they implode much faster. So with that example, I would suggest to you that is, it is essentially important for you, if, and me, by the way, if we want to survive and thrive and reach any sort of finish line in our lives, then we have to constantly develop the habit of feeding our minds and our lives in a way that will push us past some of the most challenging times that we have in our lives. And that kind of goes hand in hand with another point. And that is, it's essential, I think it's beyond essential, that you surround yourself with people that will push you through some of these survival modes. Yeah, because as you may have seen in your own life, you have people maybe in your life that are very negative and they see the glasses not even half empty, but empty. So everything that they come at you with is all negative. Do you think that those people are going to help you push through those survival modes and those, those times of discouragement? In my world, I've had to set aside those people, and I literally have to turn my back physically on these people because they're literally going to tear me down. 
they're not going to help me reach where I need to go because at the moment in that situation, they're not changing. They don't want to change. You've coached them maybe. You've, in, you've tried to get them to look at the glass as half full, but that's not necessarily the case. The point is that you are in control of the people that you allow on your team in your survival modes, or at least in your times of survival. If you were in, if you were a patient in a hospital, would you want a carpenter to come into your room and pretend to try to fix you up? Would you want a plumber to come in there? Would you want an ele electrician to come into your hospital room and start to attach what they do for electricians? I would hope not. I would hope that you would want a physician to come in who is an expert at what you're struggling with, not just some general doctor, but an expert, right? It's the same thing with life. You and I need to surround ourselves with, with people that are really good at some really cool things to help you get through some of those difficult times in your life that you're going through that you need them at that moment, at that time. And then guess what you can do for them is that you can leverage your skill sets and your knowledge with the people that are in your circle as well. Because what you give you can get back, right? Bear Grylls said one time, he said, our achievements are generally uh, really kind of small only by the beliefs we impose upon ourselves. Again, our achievements are generally small only by the beliefs we impose on ourselves. So if you believe that you can't do certain things or you believe that you can't survive in a certain mode, guess what's going to happen? you're not going to survive in a certain mode. I, I will say this, and I have, I've had to learn this the hard way, and I'm embarrassed to tell you that I'm still learning this, and that all success and all failure begins between your ears. It really does. I, I know a person right now that every time, almost every time I hear them speak, they're always putting themselves down. They're always using what they don't know and what their struggle with to keep them from doing some really extraordinary things in their lives. Because they're using what they don't know and their failures and their perceived lack of skill as a reason not to step out and do the things that could potentially be life-changing. And I'm wondering if you have fallen into that trap once or twice, that you have come to a place in your life that you've realize that you have a certain struggle in a certain area, and then you started to use that struggle as an excuse not to do some really amazingly, extraordinarily cool things in your life. I was there for a number of years, probably two decades, maybe three decades of my life. I was using my struggles, my fears, my terrors, to keep me from taking any steps even remotely close to an area of life where I could really do some extraordinary things, not for me, but for other people. If, if you and I take our eyes off of us and off of the struggles that we've been dealing with over the years and focus on how you can help people on the planet, not just in your zip code, but in the planet, if you get your eyes off of these struggles that you've had over a long, long time and leverage them instead of using them as an excuse, your life will never be the same again. Bear Grylls said, again, I love Bear Grylls, so I'm quoting him a lot on this on Marshall here today. He said, sometimes an ember is all we need. Sometimes an ember, do you know what an ember is? An ember is a, is a little tiny, not even a flame, just, just a hot set of coals little tiny little things that can start a fire that you've been, you're cold, you're out in the wilderness, you're trying to survive. And all you need is a little bit of hope, a little ember, a little idea, a little phrase, a little story. That's what it kind of like what I'm hoping to do in all these episodes we've done so far is to, is to give you just a little ember a little burning coal that can spark something in your own life that can help you excel in a way that is mind-blowing, that will not only change your life, that will not only change your family's life, 
by thousands of people that you haven't even met yet. I'm trying to be that ember. That's my, if, if there's a, a one why that I have in doing these shows, that's my why. To give you an ember that you can blow into, add some sticks to it, add some leaves to it, and then get a fire going that's not only going to keep you warm, but people around you. I'll say it again, what, what Bear Grylls said. Sometimes an ember is all we need. He, he also said, life rewards the dogged, not the qualified. Life rewards the dogged, not the qualified. If you read some biographies of some pretty famous people, I'm not going to mention names, but some pretty famous people, many of them, not all of them for sure, but many of them have some substantial learning problems. Some of them are dyslexic. Some of them struggle with reading. Some of them are afraid of flying. Some of them are afraid of loud noises. Some of them are afraid of mice. Some of them are afraid of a myriad of other things. But they've surrounded themselves with situations and environments that push them through some of these fears in order to be extraordinary. When you and I hold back, that doesn't give us any power. When you and I hold back, in fact, it deletes and depletes our power when we delay. When you and I delay doing the things that we need to do, it literally dissolves the inertia of doing some things and our potential of doing things that could be extraordinary. Let me share a story that Paul Thompson wrote back in 2009. A boy of nine, lost alone in the wilderness for 24 hours, survived using tips learned from Bear Grylls. Grayson Wynn knew he had to find shelter for the night, conserve his energy, and if possible, leave clues for searchers, thanks to watching the British Adventures TV show. He ripped up his yellow jacket and tied the pieces to trees just as he has seen in the show Man vs. Wild, the U.S. version of Grill's survival program. Born survivor, Grayson Wynn in the back of an ambulance after spending nearly a day lost in the dense forest. Born survivor, he was the one who survived as a result of learning from Bear Grylls. Rescuers followed the markers, and Grayson, who went missing when he wandered off of a family camping trip, was spotted by park rangers after they were scouring a million-acre park. A million-acre park. As a result of learning from what he was dealing with. His first words when he was reunited with his parents, he looked up at his dad and said, Happy Father's Day. I was really scared, he added, but Man vs. Wild tells you how to survive all different terrains. His father added, the thing that he recognized from the show, regardless of the circumstances you're in, is you're capable of surviving. I'll tell you flat out, some days you're not going to feel like surviving. Some days you're going to feel like there is no sense in going forward. Been there, done that. Hundreds of times, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. But the key is what you do every hour of every day that keeps you moving forward. That is, do you consistently put gasoline in your mental and emotional engine, consistently is the word, that gives you what you need to do to keep moving forward? Keep moving forward is very difficult, especially in terrain that is not so fun. So, you know, when, when you're going through some really tough times in your life, you look at the, the storm in your life, you look at the, 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 the hard times. In fact, I can remember as a kid, we're talking probably 1970-something, Hurricane Agnes came through our region of the United States. And my mother was out somewhere. I can't remember where she was at the time. But my brother, myself, and my father were home, and my mom was not home. And this was, it was a hurricane going through. And I can remember that my father was so panicked, understandably and justifiably panicked, that that created a serious panic in my own mind 
as a result of his panic. So that story can be extended to your life and my life, I think. That if you and I choose to be around people that are negative, that tend to panic, that tend to make, if you will, a mountain out of a molehill, then that air, that emotion, that terror is going to seep into your mind and into your heart. Versus hanging around people that are courageous. In fact, I, I believe, at least it, it's worked in my own life, when I choose to hang around courageous people, guess what I become like? I become like them. When I hang around people that are fearful, I'm just telling you the truth, I become fearful. So the older I've gotten, guess what I've decided not to do? I've decided not to hang around fearful people. Because if you're dealing with a struggle, do you want to hang around people that magnify that struggle? Of course not. So I choose to hang around and listen to and learn from people who are courageous, who are lions, if you will, then most days I tend to feel like a lion. Versus if you hang around little kittens or little scaredy cats, guess what you're going to feel like? It's bizarre how the mind works. I'm not a scientist by any stretch, but it's very amazing how those, what some people call mirror neurons, that as you hang around certain people, you begin to act like certain people. Now, I would suggest to you that in your own life, what mirror neurons are you giving off? I mean, how are people looking at you and are they mirroring you in a positive way or in a negative way? I know several people who have come to me and said, I can't do certain things and I don't have the skill sets to do certain things. But I've learned from people much smarter than me that sometimes you don't need to have an expertise in a certain area. Sometimes you just need to, and I hate, I really don't like this term, but sometimes you need to fake it until you make it. Sometimes, hear me, sometimes you need to act courageous until you become courageous. Sometimes you need to act like you know what you're going through and what you're doing in a survival mode even when in the middle of the survival mode, you really don't have a clue what you're doing, but you're trying to survive. So for the sake of everybody else in the camp, for the sake of everybody else in the family, for the sake of everybody else in the team, you're looking at the glass as half full. And that may mean something too. That may mean that there are times when you have to keep your mouth shut. You say, John, well, wait a minute. Now, you're just saying that people are going to mirror. Yeah, I get that. But if you're going through a downtime in your life, it's really important, and I've not followed this advice sometimes, but it's really important to not let that negativity out at all. But, because here's what happens. As you evolve and as you become better in life and as you get stronger and become that lion and, and become a true expert at surviving some of your darkest times, then people are going to start looking at you for advice and wisdom and as a model how they can become a lion. So if you have your bad days or maybe you have a bad week and you're just in this funk or this cloud that is just you can't get through it. The last thing you want to do is let that out in the public. And I've, I've struggled with that before. I know you have too. You've, you've typed some stuff out to post online, or you wanted to leave a voicemail or a text message that was just ugly as you know what, and then you, you deleted it because you knew, you thought about it a second, you know, that's going to be expanded and blown out and taken out of proportion and misunderstood and then spread around to a lot of different people, and then now all the stuff I've built upon, all the struggles I've overcome, all the people that I've encouraged and inspired are now going to look at me and like, now was he real or was he just blowing hot air? So the point of what I said moments ago is sometimes it's best when you're going through that tough time to just shut up, to listen more than you talk, listen to your mentors, find the mentors, 
watch some of these shows to help encourage it for, for that ember to, to, to re-spark into this very dark and wet spot you're in right now. Because unless you surround yourself with people who have been there and done that, then the chances of you surviving in some of your darkest days are going to be very, very minute. So learn from the best. Go find them out there. Email me if you like, john at johnwcarver.com. John at johnwcarver.com. I'll send you a list of some people that I've studied from and still do from time to time because they, they've been there and done that. I'm still in the process of being there and done that, just like you, right? So I hope there's a couple of ideas in this show that will help you get through some of these survival situations that you're in. Just You're not even talking about reaching the mountaintop. You're just trying to get through the forest that you're in right now because you can't even see the mountain, let alone climbing the mountaintop. You can get through it. Learn some things that I've shared here today. Put them into practice, and I guarantee your life's going to change in a much, much better way. My name is John Carver. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll be back real soon.